And uh, and since then, every day has been scary. It definitely has been scary. こんにちは。タビオロジの大塚です。タビオロジの津田です。えー、今月1日、ミャンマーで大事件が発生しました。日本の視聴者の皆さんもニュースで見てご存知の方も多いと思います。2021年2月1日、アウンサンスーチー国家顧問、ウェンミン大統領、その他閣僚や政治活動家がミャンマーの国軍部隊によって拘束されました。その後、非常事態宣言が発令され国軍最高司令官であるミン・アウン・フライン将軍が全ての国家権限を握ることになりましたこのクーデターが起きてからすでに2週間以上経過していますがミャンマーの状態は日に日に悪くなっていると聞いていますというのも僕たちこの196国制覇の旅を始めて2つ目に訪れた国がミャンマーでした本当に楽しい思い出しかないですたたくさんの友人ができましたただいまその友人たちがインスタグラムやフェイスブックでいろいろな思いやミャンマーで現在起こっていることを発信していますそれを見て少しでも力になれることはないかと思い動画にも出演していただいたミャンマーの大学に留学していた日本人の友人に連絡をして現在ヤンゴンでデモに参加している方へインタビューをさせてもらうことになりましたそののインタビューの中で世界の一人でも多くの方にミャンマーで今何が起こっているかを伝えたいという熱い思いやどういった思いでデモに参加しているのかなど多くの貴重な情報を聞くことができましたなので本日の動画は一人でも多くの日本人にミャンマーで今何が起こっているか知ってもらうための動画ですまず最初にヤンゴンで実際にデモに参加しているミャンマー人男性のインタビューその次に僕らの友人でミャンマーの大学に4年通い昨年卒業した木村くんへのインタビュー。で、最後に僕たちがインタビューを終えてからの感想とミャンマーへの思いを語っていこうと思います。では初めに実際にデモに参加しているミャンマー人男性のインタビューからどうぞ。Hi there.Hello. How are you doing?Hey, s o n a h i n pretty good under the circumstances, I guess. Uh-huh. Okay. Uh huh. Yeah. Okay. It's a quiet Sunday morning. So. Okay. Okay. So from now on, I'm going to interview about this、um, uh, military coup in Myanmar, what's happening right now. And、uh, first of all,、uh, thank you for accepting this interview for the YouTube. Can you hear me? Uh, you said,、oh. can you hear me? Yeah, yeah,、oh, yeah, okay. now. No. Sorry, it's, it's finally back. Sorry. Okay.、Uh, internet seems to be a little bit unstable these days. We, we're actually a little bit afraid that、um, the, our internet will be cut soon,、uh, especially with all the craziness that's happening.、Uh, okay.、Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I understood. Understood.、Uh, once again,、uh, thank you for accepting this interview for, for the YouTube.、Mm -hmm. And、um, I think.、Uh, You need, you need a big courage, courage to do this, but yeah, thank, thank you for that. Yeah,、uh, it's, a, uh, it's actually a pleasure.、Uh, and I,、uh, again, I also thank you for the opportunity to speak out as well. And first of all, what is your name?、Uh, my name is,、uh, my brother's name is Ben Taik,、uh, but most of my uh, uh, colleagues and friends call me Jack. And uh, yeah, uh, and uh, I, I basically am, um, uh, work as a YouTuber as well, a little bit on my, uh, uh, for board games. In Myanmar before all of this happens. <laughs> yeah.、Uh, okay. Okay.、Um, so, what, what do you do for a living?、Um, I'm a,、uh, for, uh, I'll, I'm a marketing manager for a fashion company.、Uh, of course, I, will not, like, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't want to mention the name here yet. But yes, uh, uh, that's my、uh, main job.、Mm -hmm. And、um, ooh, it's okay from outside. <laughs> Uh, I, don't, I don't hear nothing pretty much. It's okay. All right. Okay.、Uh, yeah. And I'm a, I'm a marketing manager and I work especially in、uh, fashion and uh, uh, especially for digital, uh, uh, digital uh, platforms.、Mm. Okay. Very nice. Very cool.、Um, for your security, and I can, I can blur your face or I can change your voice when I edit this video. 
Um, what, what would you prefer? Do you, do you, do you want to show your... Are you, are you okay with showing your face or you don't, you don't want it? Um, to be honest, I'm a little bit scared, but I, I think it's necessary to show my face and voice. It's, uh, it's a symbolic gesture, I believe. Wow. Well. <laughs> I'm uh, I'm literally amazed by your courage. I mean, yeah. Okay. We so, we have to try. <laughs> okay. Um. Okay. Let me let me start the interview now. Okay. Mm. The first question. Um. How did you feel when the coup happened, and how much were you scared? Um. Feel. Um. I mean, I I heard I first heard about the news at. Um, uh, 6 a.m. in the morning, uh, and uh, it, it just it was just a phone call that came in. I, I lived through uh, Saffron Revolution back in 2007, and even then, this is a far much worse feeling. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not I don't even know how to describe it. It's not just scare or hopelessness. It's, it's about it's about something that you've tried to be a participant to build for five years now and just seeing it all taken away what a snap you know so it's a it's a very mixture of a knot of a feeling emotions uh when i first heard the news and uh and since then every day has been scary it's definitely has been scary um it's it's also we are it's also anger. Um, we 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 had we finally had hope after uh, twenty five years, and mm -hmm. now it's just being taken away. Uh, okay, I I cannot imagine, but yeah, I, I can I can maybe imagine how you feel. Okay, so the next question is. How the country, how the how your city changed before one and after the coup, like uh, like people oh. or shops on the mm -hmm. streets, the public security, etc. Oh, okay. Um, uh, on, on a city level, on a city level, for uh, I live in Yangon, which is uh, uh, which is the commercial commercial city of the country. Okay. So, um. And uh, we've already been uh, before the before before the uh, before the the whole debacle happened before the insurgent happened. Uh, we Yangon has been a little bit slow on the slow side uh, comparatively to the past five years thanks to COVID. However, we've been recovering. We've been actually having a a lot more hope since the uh, the uh, the vaccine uh, has arrived in Myanmar, mm. and we're supposed to uh, receive our first doses. Um, actually uh, a few days ago uh but of course n now we don't have it uh and and we were very hopeful for the city to recover and on a country level everybody was being very hopeful because like we we just had we just finished the elections uh mm -hmm. and and the civil uh the elected governments are supposed to be sworn in this week and and then uh when the coup happened everything was gone um, Yangon become a very solid place. It's it's actually quite scary because when you go out, there's nobody. There's literally nobody on the street on the first day of the coup. Um, because we we've had these kind of problems before in the past twenty five years alone. So and well, uh, the, and the, the reason why uh, no one out there was the people were scared of going out. The first day was the people were scared. Oh. Um, <clears throat> the military has been known to use brutal force and they have also been shown to be very ruthless, mm -hmm. very, uh, very unhindered in their approach. So, and we have no connection. On the, on the first day, we have no internet, internet connection. We have no phone connection. There was no way for us to contact anybody. And it's just being trapped alone in an apartment. So everybody was very afraid, um, except, uh, and, and economically, not just the city, the, country, the whole country basically turned into, uh, 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 come to a halt. And now Yangon, not just Yangon, uh, Mandalay, Molomyai, Daungji, the whole country is in an uproar against the military coup. 
uh, as we want to bring back uh, democracy. And um, uh, on a shop uh, for for a retailer, it's a very slow. Uh, it's been a very slow week. <laughs> Mm-hmm. There's no, there's, there's likely no business for everybody. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I see. So, so the first day, no one out there, but now, like people, um, doing this um, demonstration every day, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, it's 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 a very inspiring thing to see because, mm-hmm. um, just nearly just five years ago, right when all the atrocities of the Rohingya has been happening, uh. And, and we we work work we're a country that has been in a civil war still made for nearly sixty years now, and it's just been there hasn't been a, a, this kind of solidarity uh, in the people uh, since if I could say like since the eighty eight uprisings, and uh, we see people out there of every color, every religion, uh, of every ethnicity walking out to. Uh, to demand the return of democracy and the release of the elected leaders, mm. and for the military uh, to step down, mm. and it's 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 a very inspiring thing to see. Mm-hmm. And we see uh, in, even in Yangon alone, there's uh, nearly uh, uh, hundreds of thousands of people all over the city, uh, very strategically working to uh, to provide safety. Uh, to all those who are pro- uh, who are protesting, and also to uh, to make sure that we're not being quelled, and also in uh, Nebido uh, and in Molamiai, we've seen the the even though the government is cracking down hard, there is still an ongoing movement. Uh, more people are going out, more people are joining the civil disobedience movement, more civil workers, doctors are walking out of their livelihoods to bring an end to this. Mm. Did the reaction on the coup differ between the different generations? Like uh, like all the people and the young people, like uh, do they react differently? Oh, very differently. That's true. Oh. Um, how, how, how do I put it? Um, uh, so between the uh, Generation X, Y, and Z, um, Generation X has to live through the worst of it. They will live, they live through under the most horrific period, uh, mm-hmm. of the Junta. And, and it was, it was basically tyranny. Um, if you speak out, if you, uh, if you go against the military or if you are even, planning to uh, leave, it's your phones are tapped, your wires are tapped, and you, they, they, they had to face so much torture and fear back then. Uh-huh. It has ingrained into them uh, a lot uh, because back in the 88 uprising, there was so much atrocities happening. The, and, and so the older generations are much more reluctant to stand up uh, uh, to be honest, and it's not, I, I, and, and it's not their fault, and they they had to live through such atrocities. So there's a there's a sense of post uh, PTSD also uh, uh, within them, and so. But for the gener the younger generations, uh, my gener- uh, our generation, generation Y, and the, the younger generation Z has been very um, active against this mm-hmm. because I, I feel like for especially for the generation Z. Uh, the young, uh, one, uh, they're very young, so they're much more, they have much more energy than we could ever hope for. Mm -hmm. And, and, uh, they have been very actively and, and peacefully, uh, to be honest, uh, peacefully protesting against all this, all this happening. And, and the most beautiful thing that I see out of the different, uh, different generations is that back during the Saffron revolution, uh, we were walking out, we were talking, we were speaking, we were yelling, et cetera, et cetera. But the, the ingenuity and the control and the way how uh, uh, the keyboard warriors and the, uh, uh, the keyboard warriors, the netizens, uh, the civil disobedience movement and the, uh, the, the protests happening at the same time, everything 
being organized by the generation, uh, the, the latest generation is very effective, to be honest. It's, it's, it's an inspiring, because the, the military really does not have, was not expecting this much uh, feedback, to be honest. Mm -hmm. and, and, and the response of Generation Z is inspiring. That's the only way, uh, way I can describe that, yeah. Mm -hmm. I see. And finally, what do citizens want from this demonstration? Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, there is a much longer go of like becoming the federal, uh, a federal republic, et cetera, et cetera, uh, among all the ethnic groups and everything, of course, and to uh, provide human rights, uh, 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 provide human rights and, 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 uh, and, and relocating the, uh, <clears throat> the Rohingya. Uh, but right now is to one, a return to democracy. Uh, mm. Because uh, that's one, uh, obviously. And next is for the military to step down mm -hmm. and basically be depowered. They, I, 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 I love my, I love the fact that there are brave men and women that are fighting in the front line for to protect the country. Uh -huh. That's that that is an essential need for a country. Mm -hmm. And however, what we're facing here right now is not that. Mm -hmm. uh, we we have a military that is in government administration that is involved in the process of lawmaking, which is, uh, to be honest, it, it doesn't make sense. And they basically made this rule, these laws are written by them back in 2008 without the consent of anyone, to be honest. They basically rigged an election uh, during, during a, a storm and say everybody supported it, but nobody was able to support it because everybody uh, was with, uh, in the middle of a disaster. And so they made this uh, unfair law and now, and, and now we really want them to step down and to, to be out of the government, mm. to be out of the administration process. Mm, and of course, lastly, is to release the elected leaders. That mm. is uh, the, uh, uh, not just the leaders, of course, like in the past few days, um, there have been night raids. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. There's more and more um, night raids happening. So uh, with people being, people in the civil disobedience movement being captured and arrested. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, so we want all these people from the union uh, election committee, the, the ones in the civil disobedience movement being pressured as well as the, any uh, uh, elected government uh, officials that are uh, being uh, captured, released immediately. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That, that is definitely what the citizens are already walk, wanting. I mean, they are asking a lot more. I have, I have heard news that a lot of my friends are asking uh, for the UN and the US to like, actually take action. Uh -huh. uh, yeah. uh, even so far to ask for military help. Uh -huh. uh, and uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a strange thing to see, uh, but I, I can understand where the sentiment is coming from. Mm, yeah. Because it seems like uh -huh. a very hopeless situation out here for us. Not just for us, but for, I mean, we are the very privileged few. Mm -hmm. The ones in Yangon are the very privileged few. The whole country of, uh, is full of poverty, full of diverse ethnic groups that are being oppressed uh, uh, through a civil war. Uh, mm -hmm. And of course, you've probably heard about the Rohingyas already. All these atrocities are, are being perpetrated by these, this, the military mm -hmm. and I can sort of understand what, where the hopelessness come from when we have no power except our heart and our voice. Mm. So what are you afraid of the most if the military side rule Myanmar? Oh my God. <laughs> Do I have to say only say one thing? <laughs> no. son? Uh, you can say <laughs> as many things as you can. No, no, uh, no, no, no. There are so many things that I... Uh, I, I don't know, when you, if you asked me five years ago, it would be a very different answer because I, I, we've never really tasted freedom or democracy before, to be mm -hmm. honest. Oh, I see. Um, so, but 
for me, the most scariest thing would be is that I, I recently got married. Um, and uh, we were thinking of, we were thinking of having a child. Well, mm -hmm. and I don't want my child to face the fears that I did to grow up in an education that does not allow you to think, uh, to be afraid of people watching over your shoulder, uh, to be to not be able to learn art uh, and be creative. I, I, I grew up in an education system where I had to travel for three hours to go to my university on a bus that is wow. going to bang my head and, and hurt my spine uh, every day in the middle of a desert, like, like a literal plain uh, old field where there's no trees. And in, in, that, in, in the far middle of that nowhere stands a huge university of computer science. <laughs> <laughs> wow. And there's no internet connection in that computer science university. <laughs> when I attended 10 years yeah. ago, uh, nearly 10 years ago, uh, 10 years ago now. So I don't want my child to face the, these kind of fear and, 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 and lack of an education system and lack of rights anymore. Not just, and, and that's, and that is the thing I'm most scared about to, for my, my child to not be able to stand up for, from being bullied by, by a government that has no intention of letting you think freely. Yeah, I, I just literally had the, the goosebump that, like uh, if your child has to um, grow up in that condition of the country and then and also like uh, how are you feeling right now it's it's it must be crazy for you it it is uh, to be honest uh, I, 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 I don't want to downplay it it's it's um it's we're trying hard to hold on we're trying hard not to lose hope Mm -hmm. but at the same time this is the fourth time that this happened within the past five decades mm -hmm. and every time we've lost the people of Myanmar, yeah. the ethnic groups everybody have lost mm -hmm. it, and it's hard to not feel that history won't repeat itself. Mm -hmm. We just had a glimpse of freedom for five years. Mm -hmm. And you know the feeling of like being captured and, 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 and stuck in a box for the whole life, you don't really care. You know, like the, the, um, like the movie Room where the child that, who, who had to live through um, uh, and raised in a, in a, in a box, in, in a box room where he has no outside contact. He is ignorant of the suffering he's going through. Mm. Yeah. But the mother who was captured by a deranged rapist and had a sense of freedom before, the pain is unbearable. Most of the older generations as even me, uh, and, and, uh, uh, who was born in 94, for us, we've never had a taste of freedom. So whenever these kind of stuff happens, we are ignorant of the suffering. Mm -hmm. We know that we're suffering, but we don't really know what we're losing because we never had it in the first place. Mm -hmm. But now we just had a glimpse of it. Yeah. And we can't go back. Mm -hmm. We can't. Yeah. We don't. We can't let the next generation, these kids who are working out on the street, yeah. suffer like we did. We can't. Yeah. Final question. Um, please, please give a message to, to the whole world, like uh, the people outside of Myanmar. And um, can you tell me what can we do for, to help the, this demo, uh, like demonstration or like the people in Myanmar? The first thing would be to use your liberty 
to give us ours. We need your help in speaking out. Mm -hmm. uh, please uh, tell your government, tell your representative, tell the UN Human Rights uh, Council, tell the human, uh, the, tell the United Nations uh, in, a, in any way you can contact mm -hmm. or actually even, you know, share this video yeah. and make it viral so that people know what we're going through. And to this is going to promote our liberty. This is going to promote our freedom. This is going to keep the, ch the, the many, the, the hundreds of thousands of young, uh, young men and women who are walking out on the street, not just young men and women, actually there's babies, um, five-year-old, seven-year-old kids who are walking out on the street these days to keep them safe. Mm -hmm. When you promote this message outside, this basically keeps them safe from being shot. Like mm -hmm. this 19 year old girl uh -huh. who was shot and killed two days ago. Oh. And lastly, um, the other thing you can do is to, uh, is to provide your aid. Um, um, I'm, I'm not saying for funds and such, it's more about humanitarian aid to all the ethnic groups that are suffering. Um, I'm I'm a, I'm a Burma, uh, I'm from the Burma ethnic group, so basically I'm from the majority. But a lot of the minorities are suffering. They all they want is a federal government, and and they're going to lose their hope if this mm -hmm. continues. So we can use all the humanitarian aid we can get for those who are those who are being displaced by the civil war, um, perpetrated by the military. The Rohingya can use. A ton of help for sure, uh, uh, and and please, please, please provide the humanitarian aid for these people. We are the privileged few, and even for us, the suffering is unbearable. For them, it would be insurmountable. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's time for statements and calls and messages. We appreciate everything, but we also need a dedicated action. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Um, okay. The the interview is done now. Um, thank you. Thank you so much for um, do, doing this interview. And uh, and once once again, uh, are you really sure that like I can use your vo real voice and your real image and uh, your name Jack? Because uh, there's so many people captured and so on. Like uh, I'm, I'm really worried. I'm. I'm, I'm also scared as well, that's for sure. Um, but I, 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 how do I put it? There's so, there so many more people who are risking so much by being uh -huh. out there. Uh, and if, I, if, the, if my act of showing my face and my voice is a symbolic gesture, of how much we need help, mm -hmm. I would gladly do it. Okay. Okay. All right. Um, thank you so much. Thank you so much for everything. <laughs> thank you. Uh, thank you so much, Isan, for uh, helping us. Uh, helping us give this voice as well. Uh, this. This has been. Uh, I don't even know how to describe it. This has been a great feeling. A uh, great moment. Um, thank you yeah, for everything you. and um, I really hope your sa safety thank you thank you so much bye bye thank you bye see you はい続いては僕たちがミャンマーに訪れた時にえっと動画撮影にも協力していただいたミャンマーの大学に通っていた木村徹くんにインタビューをしたいと思いますよろしくお願いしますお願いしますというわけで、えっ、ー、と、キムとミャンマーの関わりについて、少し自分で自己紹介してもらえますか。はい。僕はあの日本の高校を卒業した後に、ミャンマーの大学、ヤンゴン外国語大学というところに進学して、でそこで4年間、ビルマ語と、えー、ミャンマーのカルチャー、文化ですよね、を学んできました。でそのまあ大学に通いながら、僕はずっとしてきた剣道
をミャンマーの人々人たちと一緒にしたり、まあ、ミャンマー剣道協会公式の団体を作って、まあ、初めてのアセアン大会に一緒に僕は選手としてではなくてコーチとして出場したりそういった活動もしていましたなるほど、はい、ありがとうございますありがとうございます<笑>まず最初の質問ですえっと、今回、軍事クーデターが起きたニュースを最初に聞いて、正直どれぐらい驚きましたか、どんなことを感じましたかそうですね、まあ、その軍事クーデターのニュース、まあ、2月の1日だったと思うんですけど、その前から、まあ、なんかよあまり良くない噂っていうのは伺っていて、あそうだったただそそう、それでも、それでも多分この民主化に向かっているこのミャンマーで、うん、まさか軍事クーデターが今、起きるとは思っていなかったので。とても驚驚いて驚きましたねなるほど。じゃあ次の質問なんですが、えっと、ミャンマーにたくさん友人いると思うんですけど、ミャンマーにいる友人からどんなメッセージを受け取っていますかそうですね、最初、まあ、2月の1日とかは、まあ、なんて言えばいいのかわからないけど、こういう状況、クーデターが起きた状況ですっていうメッセージが来たり、まあ、中には多分長期戦になると思うから、その日本の大学に提出しようとしていた書類を代わり,代わりに提出してほしいとか、うんまあ、そのここ最近だと状況は悪化してきているので、うんまあ、私が動画を動画や写真を送るからもし私の身に何かがあったら日本の社会に公開してほしいとか、うん、なるほどそういうメッセージも来てます、はい、そのメッセージの私にもし,かないもし何かがあったらっていうメッセージの内容っていうのは、まあ、ざっくりどんな感じなんですかそうですね、あの、その彼女は医者なんですね。うん、で、今、その、公務員もはじめ、まあ、いろいろな、まあ、公務員から始まった、まあ、CDM、その市民的非服従活動という、まあ、抗議活動の一環のものが行われていて、まあ、お仕事に就かない、仕事をせずにデモに参加する。そうすることによって、うんまあ、その私たちが働かなければその経済は回らないっていうことを分からせるという活動、まあ、暴力に頼らないそういった活動をしているんですけどもその中でやっぱり政府はその、まあ、公務員に対してその活動に参加しているものは拘束するという声明を出したのでそれに対してという形ですねその,その子も身の危険を感じてそういったメッセージを送ってきたというところですあとは動画ですよね出回っている動画だったり、まあ、発砲しているところを撮った動画だったり、さまざまです。それはあの、Facebook とかあのメッセンジャーとかでやり取りしてるんですかそうですねあの、メッセンジャーでやり取りしています。その通信規制がなんかちょっとあ,あるみたいな報道も見たんですけど、うん、ミャンマーの SNS でなんか禁止されているものとかも出てきてるんですかそうですね。もう政府としては Facebook、Twitter、Instagram、まあ日本では当たり前に使われているものは規制されて、うん、ただその現在その、使用している人もたくさんいるのは VPN。ああ、v まあ。VPN といったところをしっかりと使って、かませて使っている人たちはまだつながっているという状態です。ただ、まあ、今後さらに規制は厳しくなると聞いています。うんありがとうございます。ではまた次の質問に移ります。今、キムがミャンマーのために何かしていることはありますかそうですね。あの、僕はもともと留学、ミャンマーの大学を出ていますし、今日本にいるんですけど、まあ、他にも実はそういう元留学生とかはたくさんいて、ただみんな、まあ、Facebook とかで流れてくる情報を見ていることしかできない。で、日本側、同じタイミングで日本側でも、でも、ミャンマーの方々のデモだったり、いろいろ起こって、まあ、正直、日本社会の間でのミャンマーのイメージ、印象はどんどん悪くなっていく。うん、そこが、まあ、とても悲しいなと感じていたので、で今は、その、あの、ボイスフロンミャンマーという活動を始めて、まあ、ミャンマーの人たちの感じたこと、まあ、政治的意見ではなくて感じていることを集めて、それを僕たち、そのミャンマー語と文化を理解できる日本人が翻訳して
、で日本の社会の方に発信していくという活動を始めています。おなるほどじゃあそちらのリンクはぜひ概要欄に貼らせていただきます。はい、ありがとうございます。ぜひ見て,見てみてください。少しでもあの、まあ、身近に感じてもらうこと、うんまあ、僕自身もやっぱり今回こう考えていますけど、まあ、他の国、他の遠い国の人たちがまあこういったニュースが、こういうか、まあ、クーデターだったり、いろいろな問題にあっているというニュースとかを見ても、まあ、あんまり関心を抱くことがなかったのでそ,その時にまあ日本人で日本人の若者がまあそういう発信のする活動をしていればさらに共通点を見出して興味を持ってもらえるのかなと思ったのではいぜひ見てみてくださいなるほどぜひ見てみてくださいじゃあ次の質問に行きますえっとキムはミャンマーの大学に通って、まあ、ミャンマー語も喋れるじゃないですかそんなキムが思うミャンマーの魅力、はい、何ですかそうですね多分行った人みんな好きになるところだと思うんですけど、まあ、とりあえず人が優しいっていうのは本当にその通りだと思っていて、うんまあ、それも暑苦しいぐらい優しい時があるんですよね。<笑>いやー分かるだいそう多分その旅オロジーのお二人も旅行された時、旅行というか旅をしていた時に感じられたと思いますけど、大丈夫だって言ってるのに、いやいや、これ持ってけ、これ持ってけとか、案内してやるよとかいうのもあって、なのでそういう温かい国だなと思いますね。うん、人柄ですね。うんうん、やっぱり、そんだけ魅力がある分、こういうクーデターが起きるみたいなことは悲しいですよね。そうですね。ミャンマーに関連している外国人とかもみんな言ってるのはちょっとあまりにもスピードが速すぎてついていけてない、うんうん、確かに知っているミャンマーではないように感じるっていうところも正直みんな言っているところはありますよねなるほど、えっと、今浮かんだ質問なんですけど今ミャンマーにいる外国人の方はどういう状況にあるんですか、うん、そうでですね僕の方で入っている情報だとやっぱりもうほとんどの大使館、各国大使館が、まあ、各国の人々、だから日本人だったら日本大使館が、まあ、不要不急の外出は控えるようになるほどとの通達を出していて、まあ、救援便の交渉ですよね、自分たちの国の人間を母国に戻せるような措置を働きかけている。うんなるほどそ,れをそれを待っている人もいますし、まあ、そうですね、みんな家で待機して、情報発信や情報収集に努めているという状況だと思います。なるほど。以上でインタビューは終わりです。協力してくれてありがとうございました。はい。はい、ありがとうございました。はい。というわけでインタビューが終わりました。でここからは、えっと、僕たちが今回のインタビューを終えてからの感想と今の現状のミャンマーについて思うことを話していこうと思います。というわけでまずジャックさんと実際にインタビューした津田からどう思うまず一番やっぱグッてこうなんていうか、あのー、心に響いたのは、えっと、インタビューの一番最初にもその顔と声と名前を使ってもいいかっていうのを聞いたんですけど、うん、で本当に全てのインタビューを終わってみて本当に心配になって、うん、ジャックさんのことがでそれで、あのーまあ、もう一回ジャックさんにね、あのまあ動画にも見てもらった通りなんですけど、ジャックさんにも最後にも聞いて、でそこであの、まあ、僕なんかよりも全然、外で出て体を張って頑張ってくれてる人もいるし、うんまあ、こうやって自分が声と、えっと、顔を出すっていうことで、その僕たちの真剣さが伝わるんだったら、ぜひ出したいっていうのが、まあ、本当にそれぐらい危機的な状況なんだなっていうのと、あとジャックさんの,その勇気。うん、はもう本当にあのまあす,、まあ、すごいすごいなと思いましたね、うん、そうだねやっぱりミャンマーの歴史を全部知ってるわけじゃないし、うん、僕らは、まあ、僕もインタビューしてその、うん、サフラン革命とか、えっと、八八八八運動とか、まあ、しかも俺,俺は英語で言われたし、うん、ちょっとうん分かんなかったところもあったけど、まあ、でもそのいろんな節々にさ今ミャンマーが起きてる状況がどんだけ
最悪な状況なのかっていうのが分かるよね、うん、例えばあの僕たちは自由を吸ってしまった、うん、そうだね俺はあの言葉がすごい響いたねまあそうだねなんかそのあのパートが特に心に来たし、うんうんまあ、特にあとはこれをきっかけに少しでいいから、まあ、東南アジアのね歴史というか、まあ、日本と東南アジアの関係とかもね、まあ、俺は知ってもらいたいなって思うよねうんやっぱり俺たちの年代だとさ東南アジアに行く人ってめちゃめちゃ多いじゃん多いねアメリカの次だったらもうヨーロッパよりも東南アジアなんじゃないかなって思うんだよねうんで俺たちの日本史の教科書には東南アジアのことなんてなかなか出てこないよね、うん、でも彼らの歴史には日本は大きく関わってて、うん、確実に出てくるパートがあるんですよねまあ歴史的な部分についてはね俺たちも詳しくないから触れれないけどまああっちゃんの動画とかね池上彰さんの動画とか、うんまあ、いろんな部分でねもう今俺たちは知れる楽しく学べる環境が整ってるからさまあそういうところから飛んでね、まあ、この動画をきっかけにミャンマーもちろんミャンマーもだけどそれ以外の東南アジアの国の歴史とか日本との関わりに関しても知ってもらいたいなとも思ったね加えてで次に僕たちミャンマーに15日間か滞在していたんですけど、うん、もう1年半前にまあ、その時のねミャンマーへの印象をこれから語っていこうと思います何かまあキムも言ってた通りまあ本当にとりあえずもう優しい優しすぎるぐらいっていうのが、うん、あの本当に一番でうん,うんまあすごい印象残ってるのは僕たちがヒッチハイク企画みたいなあった、ね、ミャンゴンからあの最終的にどうなんだっけタウンっていうちっちゃい町まで行ったんですけどそこでも本当に英語一言も喋れない人が「あのバス停あっちだよバス停あっちだよ」とかもうすごいあのしつこくほんとにしつこいぐらいしつこいぐらいあの助けようとしてくれたりとかそのヒッチハイクを捕まえる時もみたいな捕,捕まえる時、うん、もう俺もとにかくやっぱり一番はやっぱ挨拶するとさみんな目,目を見て笑顔で返してくれるんだよ俺はそれがすっごい印象的でこんなにしっかり挨拶するのみたいな、うん、すごいなっていうところが一番印象でそれが一番ミャンマーの国民性を物語ってるのかなとも思うね、うん、あとやっぱりその見返りを求めない優しさだよねそうだねもう確実にその俺たちはさ日本人ってまあ言い方悪いけどかもやからさ、うん、お金持ってるしそれはもう東南アジアの人みんな分かってるからさだから警戒してるんだけどもう徐々にねあこの人たちもう底抜けに優しいんだなって見返り何も求めないんだよ、うん、求められたことがないですね一、うん、回も本当にもちろんそのバガンとかねその歴史的な建造物だったりパゴダとかも綺麗だけど一番ミャンマーの魅力何って聞かれたら今キムと同じになっちゃうけど人だよね人が優しいミャンマーは特に人だと思う本当に素晴らしい国民性を持ってるなって思うからこそこういう動画撮りたいなって俺たちも思ったしまああのー、まあキムも言ってたようにもしかしたら今日本人の間でいろんなニュースが日本の中でいろんなニュースが流れててミャンマーのでミャンマーへの印象を悪くしてる人もいるかもしれないっていうのを聞いて、まあ、本当にそうなってほしくないなって思ったし。ね本当に死ぬほど優しい人たちなのに印象がまあ何も知らない人は悪くなっちゃ印象が悪くなっちゃってるっていうのがすごい悲しいなって思うしやりきれないなって思うし僕たちのえこんぐらいの影響力でねどんぐらいこの動画が影響をミャンマーにいい影響を及ぼすか分かんないけど、うん、まあ一人でも多くのね人にあのジャックさんの声やねキムの思いがね届けばいいなと思いますというわけで動画は以上になりますでこの後に少しあのさっきインタビューに答えてくれた木村くんから
木村君がミャンマーの友達から受け取ったミャンマーで起きているリアルな映像をあのお届けして、えー、とこの動画は終わりにしますでこの後の映像を見ていただいたら分かると思うんですがやっぱり軍隊もね国軍の人たちの中にも、うん、今の政権軍事政権を疑問視している人がたくさんいてどんだけミャンマーの人たちがねこのクーデターをにこのクーデターに恐怖を抱いているかっていうのが分かると思うんでいや本当に本当にすごい映像でしたね、うん、全部びっくりしましたもう引き続きこの動画をお付き合いくださいそしてご視聴ありがとうございましたありがとうございます